Good afternoon. Welcome to the guest lecture of Herr Jan van Stam on how linear economies colonize circular economies. My name is Alina Strasser, and I'm a third year student of the study program Global Project and Change Management, short GPCM, which is also the host of today's event. GPCM is a four year Bachelor of Administration English taught at Winnesheim University of Applied Sciences here located in Zwolle, the Netherlands. And this program teaches us students to become international product managers and leaders for change. In January 2022, I started working as student assistant in recruitment and communications of that program. And in this role, I had the pleasure of organizing the practicalities of guest lectures for many inspiring speakers. But today's guest lecture is special to me, not only because it's the last one I'll be organizing as part of this role, I will go abroad soon as part of my curriculum, but more importantly, because of my relation to Gert Jan and the importance of today's topic. In my last semester, I followed the educational concept value creators, which encourages us students to explore a complex issue by leaving the classroom and networking with experts. And together with two other GPCM students, we have explored the topic of neocolonialism and its manifestations in the development aid sector. Shortly after reach out to our network on LinkedIn, I found myself deeply inspired by this man who just decided to walk down a few floors of the X building and who came to us saying, I have exactly what you're looking for. Oh boy, I had no idea that this man would put a successfully an identity crisis on myself. <laughs> Her Jan challenges my worldview frequently, and I hope that today with this guest lecture, he can do the same with you. We need to understand how colonized our mindsets and economies are to then unlearn and rebuild them. This is why today we at Global Project and Change Management are organizing and hosting this guest lecture. Some practicalities. You have already been welcomed with hot chocolate, coffee, tea, and some cookies downstairs. They will also be available in a 10 minute break. And if you need to go to the bathroom, you just go down the stairs and follow this wall on the left side, you will find them. Please make sure to be back on time so you don't miss out on any content. And um, after this event, you're also very welcome to stay. We will have some snacks and then we can chat and continue conversing on this guest lecture. So having said that, I now want to leave the floor to Dr. Marcos Popkema, the Associate Professor of Electoral Networking in a Circular Economy here at Winnesheim University. Good afternoon. Alina, thank you for uh, having us here. It's an honor uh, for us as the professorship of networks in a circular economy uh, to contribute uh, to this meeting. Um, so I'm uh, welcoming you here, dear audience, uh, on behalf of our professorship. Uh, my name is uh, Marcus Popkema. Uh, as Alina said, I'm uh, working uh, in the professorship um, I have to apologize that our uh, professor, uh, Lisbeth Rijsdijk, uh, isn't here, but she has a very good reason for not being here because she's on jury duty. This afternoon, there's the election of the most uh, circular, inno innovative product in uh, this region for this year, and uh, she's in the uh, committee of uh, making the right choice. So, audience. Um, uh, it's good to have you here. Um, first of all, we would like to welcome our students. Uh, it's you who called for this lecture, um, and that's very, very good. We also uh, like to uh, welcome the professors and lecturers uh, and many students from uh, universities around the world. Uh, we've seen people signing up from countries as Botswana, Germany, Kenya, Rwanda, South Africa, South Sudan, Tanzania, the UK, the list is even getting longer, the USA, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Here in this room and also online, uh, we have uh, many professors and lecturers and people here in the room that travel far to be here with us 
present, uh, and that's uh, 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 that's very nice. Uh, we have people from um, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Leiden, Delft, and Ede, and even more places. We are very honored uh, to have you here. Also, a special welcome to uh, governmental rep representatives. Um, we've also seen uh, signing up uh, uh, these uh, representatives from uh, several countries, and we welcome leaders from uh, businesses and uh, NGOs. Thank you for being with us here today. Then I'm going to tell you uh, really a little bit about the professorship of uh, networks in a, a circular economy where uh, Gert-Jan and I uh, work. It's a research group in our University of Applied Sciences where uh, 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 15 persons uh, work. We do applied research, um, research in the kind of collaboration that is necessary for developing circular, circular, circular economy. Um, we dive into the behavior that is needed for these types of collaboration. We uh, uh, do research on multiple value creation, and we look at the, uh, the role of rules for developing circular economy. Then, I'm very proud to introduce my special colleague, Gert Jan. He joined us uh, last summer. And uh, we got to know him uh, a little bit. Uh, we found out that he uh, 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 has a, uh, a lot of experience in uh, culture studies, and he has uh, 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 experience with uh, living in Africa. And uh, after we got to know him a little bit, uh, we concluded that it was safe for us uh, to be colonized uh, by him. And uh, that's uh, uh, giving us joy. So special attention to Gert Jan van Stam. Twenty year seventeen, I walked also on a stage in South Africa. I was invited by the University of the Western Cape to discuss decolonization of education. They didn't warn me at the time that uh, the Rhodes Must Fall movement was in full speed and that they were targeting especially the University of Cape Town and the University of the Western Cape, which is in Belleville near Cape Town. And they were organizing a, 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 um, lectures from, uh, to give an invited lecture. You could speak whatever you wanted. And um, there was a big group of students and they were uh, taking all the coffee quickly, so the professor didn't have one. And they were taking all the food quickly, and nobody said something. So it was quite interesting what was happening here. There was some tension being built, but I was also very nervous to do a speak, to, to, to speak about a, a very touchy subject in the lion's den of Cape Town. And they were well geared because there is this white, tall guy, most probably from Europe, going to tell in South Africa how it is about decolonization of science. Now this, this embodies everything we don't want. And I was not told that before me there was another lecture which was a very renowned black South African who was taken out by the students. They yelled him away. They didn't tell me. So now this room, and I wrote the whole thing out, and you can see it on my website, the text is there. Um, talking about the subject of decolonization and why I thought I was pri privileged to be asked to contribute something for it. But you could see they were standing up to now, when is the time to now get rowdy? But they didn't. Because at the lecture, uh, we got an understanding of a very difficult subject. We didn't hide it away. I also thought about our Amsterdam and that it's full of um, symbols of uh, the slavery and the colonial state that the Netherlands was in. And that was where I was brought up. But that you can learn even tough subjects. And that's what we're going to do today, I hope. So this is a tough subject. 
that I want to discuss with fear and trembling. But I'm very grateful that, you, that we are here together. Uh, but this lecture is meant for students, and I can hardly see students because they're almost all on the, on the, there. So can I ask you to stand up students and sit next to me because this is, this is for you. So can you please come here? Come down. And those who are not students and are in their place, you go back. All right? Please. So students come forward. Thank you for that. Thank you. Wonderful. Students from all over, actually. There's also from Twente University. And, uh, and of course, we're all students, you know. So I don't want to make it too restrictive. Then I want the second thing to happen. Yeah, just uh, take your seat. Very nice. Thank you for coming. Eh? You know, we're all busy in this, uh, this country. And you take two hours. And I really ask you to stay two hours, please. Because we're going to do something, but halfway, don't walk away, <laughs> because it's a hopeful story. But we are putting our seatbelts on here. It's a turbulence warning because uh, we have teachings, we have feelings, values, a study, by the way, uh, in the bottom. Later you can find this is the scientific base of what I'm saying. So the quotes are there. By the way, I have another uh, idea. Those who are teaching or are coaching, can you please stand up? Can you coach uh, coaches and teachers of students? Can you stand up, please? Students, stay seated. And coaches, teachers, I would like you to applaud the students for being here. You also, <laughs> yes. Thank you for coming. This is not a simple subject. You take it out of your agenda. You don't get points for this. No ECs or CEs, or I don't know what it's all about. But I hope you learned something today. And thank you for coming. We're putting seatbelts on because um, this is a tough story. And it, 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 it comes near to the heart. But uh, out of this study that was done at Windesheim, it says, stay in the present. Don't think too much about your past or what the future brings. Just stay in the present. Be, let's, let's be together. I'm also in the present. I, I actually don't know this presentation very well, but it's going to be emerging. Because um, the, what we are going to try to find out is unknown unknowns. We live in a bubble here. Many things we don't know, and what we don't know that we don't know. And it's the role of the coaches and professors and whatever, I think to humbly tell it could be that this is what you don't know. And um, well, because life is perplexing, it's super complex, it's cognitive dissonances. I'm telling you I'm an African. How can you claim that? Well, I'm a shredded identity, uh, so I'm also Dutch, <laughs> but I'm also African. And that's why I'm so grateful for my friends and uh, the students from all over the world that I have linked in today. I think there are more online than sit here. This is also a modern world, but they sit now in computers in the village of Macha, Zambia, in Mashvingo, Zimbabwe. Actually, the professor who invited me in 2017 is also watching in Stellenbosch University and many more. I don't want to mention too many because I will miss people and people will see it afterwards, but they are also here and we welcome them. And we all know that life is perplexing. We get have habits. And we have feelings. And then, um, so how come I tell this story? Well, this is a research uh, environment here. So I hope this comes out of research. And who is a researcher? That's me in this case. A pracademic. I'm practical academic. I do and learn. And this is my family, by the way. And I'm more, my, my son is here. I'm very grateful he's also here. And many people. Uh, uh, fathers and spiritual fathers are with me here today, but uh, this is my family in uh, uh, a cottage we built last year ourselves in Amelo. Um, we are deconstructing, so there will be lots of terms that you might not know. Please note them down, Google them later. The, every slide is a book here. Yeah. It's a whole story, so don't, I don't expect you to, <laughs> to know all these things, but uh, hopefully you pick up some words that you might want to study. Deconstructing and then reconstructing perceived realities. Because what we see is just what we perceive. And we do that, I do that through living research. I'll get that a bit more. But it's an ethnography. You make stories. You, 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 you describe what you see. It's really storytelling. And um, why do we do this? 
well, it's time that we find our intrinsic motivation, not the rules and regulations that force us to do things or the social control that is on us, but why do we want to do that? We need to know ourselves. And for that, we need to be <laughs> always deconstructing ourselves and reconstructing, allowing us to grow. And we look for commendable behavior. When do I research? All the time. I wrote a book in my dreams this night. I don't know if that's part of research, but I couldn't read it very well. Always research, always observing. And this is also research what we're doing. Always research. Research is just being curious. So what is this living research about? This is community-based research. It's, a com it's a research from the viewpoint of community, not from the researcher, myself, or the subject, or whatever. The community, it comes out of belonging. You're part of the community. Um, the community says what needs to be done. And that's why I'm so grateful this is an invited lecture, because you, as a community of students, ask this to happen. And um, it's embedded, it's populated, and so on. There's papers written about it. I'm going a bit fast about it, but it's a personal interpretative analysis of an extended case study, longitudinal. It's not just now, now, but it has been, this is my life, by, basically. And uh, it's conducted from the perspective of an authorized civilian. Very important to be authorized in the Netherlands, Europe, and Africa. I have stamps in my passport that allows me to do research, to be a researcher for the Ministry of Health, I think, <laughs> in Zimbabwe in this case. But embedded, and it's important that we are ethically right, well positioned, and not stealing from communities. So, what's the agenda for today? We're going to make sense of making sense. Then we're going to see what is this linear economy about. Then we have a break. Please don't go away after the break, because then you, are, then you know only one thing, what a linear economy is. Then we're going to discuss the circular economy. And then we're going to have a hopeful story for this future. But before we get there, we have to go through quite a story. The story is about making sense of making sense. How do we know what we know? And we, oh, that depends on your philosophy. But the philosophy also depends on something. The philosophy depends on what you think you know, what you think you can touch almost, what being is, and what is worth, what is of value. That is below a certain philosophy of Kant and Hadamas and, and whatever we have got in this environment. Uh, but above it, there's this thinking about what you think reality is, what is, what is know, to know, what it is to be, and what is of worth. And it's very important that to see that, uh, yeah, I, I'm, an, I'm an engineer. Then I found out that engineering is basically what you think. So I, then I went into culture. <laughs> uh, so I got a PhD in culture as an engineer. And then I found out, yeah, even that, it is about worldviews. Because worldviews beget cultures and cultures beget behaviors. And philosophies beget values and values beget identities. Now we're getting real tough stuff, but note it down, study this stuff, because it's very important to, we are claiming to know something, we are going to claim something out of what is it coming, not about the philosophy, but even higher. Because if we get cross-cultural, the philosophy in this environment is very much five white guys in the Netherlands. But in Africa, we have many other philosophies, Koza, uh, Nkame, um, and so on and so on. Then we have practices. You can observe something, and out of that come stories. So we can observe. Then stories get into systems. There's case who knows about these things. Systems get, uh, get to symptoms. So when we see something, there's a system behind it, but that system was built on a story. And we're going to discuss the stories of the economy today. So you're still following me? Yeah. So it's very important to understand to start with a story. Then we get a system, economic system or whatever system. And then we get what we see, global warming. That's a symptom. But it's also very important to know that powers, we want power, they are under authority. Authority makes the playing field and the powers um, behave in that field. They know the game. The game is set by authority. Very often, not well understood. 
making sense of making sense. How do we know and what do we know and what do we think we do know? There are two main streams of knowing. That is called, uh, called epistemology. You remember the previous one? Epistemology, what is knowledge? Okay. Epistemology, I only take two. The normative epistemology and the dynamic integrative epistemology. The normative uh, says we, uh, we have a difference between doing and thinking. And what we strive to find in normative uh, is they get certainty. So much certain that it's indubitable, it's infallible, and this is a statement, and there's a paper here, and this is how it is. This is how the economy works. This is how we have proven that. It works like this. That is what normative epistemology does. It's universal. If it works here like this, it will also work like that. I will tell you that this computer, the way it works here, does not work the same way in Africa. It took me 10 years to understand that the way it's being implemented by people and Vint Cerf and Tim Berners-Lee, I talked to them, the inventors of the internet, saying this thing doesn't work. They said, oh, it's normative. It works everywhere the same. No, 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 no. 10 years. I could almost not publish it. It's published in Burkina Faso. Normative, universal, and we can boil it down to a formula. So when we have the formula, it's linked to normative knowledge. But it is dynamic integrative. Now this becomes interesting because now we have our emotions. We are human beings. We have intellect. We have judgment. We have action. We bring in our whole being. In, it's not knowledge. It's knowing. You remember power comes out of authority. Authority comes from the relationships you have. So dynamic integrative epistemology brings in your being. You can be who you are. You are observing and it's you who observes. And, and rather we want us to observe, we to observe. And that is the knowing involves the whole mechanism. We need each other to know. So now I'm telling something, but it is a delegated story. I first checked the story with several people in communities to say if I could explain this. It's not me standing here. I'm a representative because this is a dynamic integrative story. Are you still getting me? No? Yes, yes. Good. It's very important because otherwise on what thing are we claiming what an economy is? So now I am I, I am an engineer and I'm a cultural whatever. I'm not an economic apparently, so a normative I'm out, but dynamic integrative I'm in. So I'm saying an economy, my 10 cents is the way people or how the living transact. Now we get an ecological point of view because that's what we're heading for. Are, pre, are rivers acting with us as the New Zealanders tell us? Is nature telling, talking to us? The living is, and other beings. My friend, Professor Mawere, also online from, uh, from Zimbabwe, will claim. It's social science, economics. Social science, social. Not uh, mathematics in that sense. And there are many ways of doing economy. There's a normative way of economy. In that way, it's sort of uh, the rules. But I m wanted to call another economy, which I call almost indicative economies. To me, all knowledge and so on, you get it, but it, you, you can't get it. If you grab it, it fl flows away. You have that feeling also. You get it, and I studied, 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 and the more I know that I don't know. And uh, that's the same with the economy. What is actually economy? And there's new economies coming up, thank God for that. And uh, economy of mutuality, well developed. Uh, agape economies, uh, many times. I will throw another economy in today, but it doesn't matter. It, it's not normative, it's dynamic integrative. And let's see what this guy, Bob Marley, is, is, a movie about him is just out to, uh, yesterday. Let's see what he said about economy. And there is no sound. Can you? No, we have no sound. Okay. Um, this, he says, actually, ask back. The, 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 oh, money. I mean, what is, how, much is, how much is a lot of money to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Have, have you made, say, millions of dollars? No. Are you a rich man? What do you mean rich? What do you mean? You have a lot of possessions, a lot well, of money in the bank. Position make you rich? I know I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life forever. You got him. All right. 
So what's the economy of this one? So let's, let's show how we can be wrong-footed in a university. So we have Brexit. Now, Brexit is bad for the economy. Numbers are there, normative. 52% hey, says it's bad. The Ivory Tower analyst says, no, of course, you don't do Brexit, don't you? <laughs> bad. So we put it in the newspapers and so on. But then we have got Cambridge Analytica. We can think whatever they want. They wrote an interesting book, um, which I won't mention what the name is. But they said, what does the word economy mean to you? And they went around and they said in London, the answer was, yes, of course, I have it internalized, you know, spreadsheets, uh, uh, national products and so on. And they went to the bars and had a beer outside of London. They said, those are those elite. They are grabbing my money. They said, what about the baker around? No, that's not the economy. The economy is those elite. They are grabbing my money. So these, uh, these guys from Analytica said, hey, let's tell that is good, this Brexit, that is bad for the economy. You know, so the remain is right. It's bad for the economy. So we support the remain story that is bad for the economy because that will give us back it. Counterintuitive. Are you getting it? It's a switch. It's omdenken. It's a switch. And um, so you amplify the story of the <laughs> that you think that everybody says that, is, that you don't do, and it happens because it's bad for the economy. So it's good because the elite is not grabbing my money. That's... And of course, uh, there's many stories like that, but it's just showing that the analysts, and I, I, I put a paper here, and, and the ivory tower analysts have real difficulty explaining why there was a Brexit. Well, them uh, with this very uh, impossible name uh, said, you know, it's just uh, listening over a beer. That's practical research. All right, now we're getting to the meat. What are we talking about? A linear economy. Now, it's interesting. I'm searching for the definition of a linear economy, and I couldn't find it. Now, I, I'm not, I might not have searched well. It must be somewhere. But a search of about a week, I couldn't find it. And then I found the MacArthur uh, Foundation, a well-respected foundation, saying something what it is. When you read the paper, linear economy, there's no definition there. It's just saying linear economy, and blah, 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 blah. And then it goes on. And it talks on and on. And what's the definition of a linear economy? Well, it's basically you take, you use, you throw. Everybody sort of knows, but it's implicit knowledge. And they're looking for a definition. And I'll come back to after the break how significant this is. So the definition of a linear economy is difficult to find. It is a Eurocentric political economy. And it was put in practice when there was the industrial revolution in England, basically, with the cotton industry, the first industrial revolution. They needed something to aggregate, get capital. And then uh, there was, um, but that was, again, based on the alignment idea, which the Netherlands played a, quite a big role in. And then it was also based on the reformation, which now Switzerland and Germany played a big role in. It's all in Europe. Tell me, anyone who contributed in this thinking from outside of Europe? Maybe a bit in the United States, but that was Europe also, because I'm not so sure that the uh, indigenous population were contributing at that time. So it is very common in so-called modern context. But who now defines what modernity is? Another one. Again, note it down, study it, because we can't go into it. But it's fascinating. And read Dussel, for instance, or what they say about modernity in Latin America and so on. It's a, it's a, it's a thought um, of what it is. So I would like to, um, to propose the economy from a values-based. So we're not having spreadsheets here, but we're going to see what is the story behind the community, but behind the economy. And again, we take the 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 idea that we have stories, and then we have systems, and then we see the systems, uh, the symptoms. Eh? So these are them. These are the values that I propose are in the linear economy. I'm not sure if this is ever presented, but let's go for it. And I'm going to dive into it, and then we have a break, okay? Are we still together? Yeah? Read them. All right. We go into them. I'm only going to do the top three because we are talking about a different subject here, but I have to introduce what we are, what is colonizing what else, eh? 
So the first one, the one of, uh, oh, yeah, I, I forgot to tell you, this is a mythical story, by the way. This, this linear economy is mythical. It is mythical because it says, break it down, then it rises up. That's a phoenix myth. So the phoenix is a bird that flies in the fire and it comes uh, re and renewed. And it was slash and burn and it worked in, uh, in the past, but it doesn't work anymore because we slash and burn the whole earth now and we get something else back than we got before. So it's a mythical story, believing that if you break it down, it will rise from this ashes. And it's on the self-interest of the, of the phoenix in this case, or the Western society or whatever. It's perfected through military. Many people go in studies in many countries and they get funded by the military to do that, or the industrial complexes. And it's inert. It means that your friends will tell you what, what is success about this. And if you don't uh, work with it, you are against the institutes, it's quite tough. And that's why the story that you're hearing today is quite tough to put on the agenda. All right, the first one. These are heavy values, so brace yourself. The age of separation, you must have seen it somewhere. You know, sometimes you have the Mondiot in the Guardian who writes about these things. There's some feeling of there's something wrong here and loneliness, the first <laughs> illness that we have in in, uh, on the continent, on this continent, which can hardly be understood in other continents, that, uh, you know, is, it, out, it comes out of this. It's created dichotomies, um, borders, scarcity, it works on all that, and it's created histories of, of, uh, and specific kinds of money. Uh, you know, 90 plus percent of the money that we are using is not really existing. We've created it. And we use that money. But if you go to Harare, or uh, friends are watching right now, there is not one building in Harare that has a mortgage. Not one building having a mortgage. How would Zwolle look like if we have no mortgages here? System collapse? No. You go there, you see, the whole town. It's not only there. Dar es Salaam might be the same. Or uh, Santiago de Chile, I don't know. Maybe there. Um, it's set in Orientalism, it's othering, this is you, not me, oh you're black, I'm white, oh you, are, you have studied, I did not, it is othering of people, and also nature, nature is there to something else, we are not nature, um, as a, what's the Orientalization, as an essentialization of others, creating others, and then telling what they are, Chinese people are like that, African people are black, maybe even, no, I won't put the names there that we could put to it. Um, and it links in with slavery. Now, slavery has been of all times, but um, the Dutch and the English and so on were perfecting it with ships and stuff. And um, yeah, it's there, perfected. And it has huge economic ramifications because out of this separating stuff, we got all these uh, patriarchy. Patriarchy, they tell me, that was is also coming up uh, forcefully only last this, uh, se hundreds of years. And it's the, in the history, we enslaved the present. There was somebody walking there, you enslaved, you, you, brought, you, you, sold, uh, you brought him somewhere else, and you sold as a property. The enslavement of the present was in the history. Right now, we have obscene inequality. I cannot imagine, what, but I, I have no other words than the equality that you see is just obscene. We have gated communities, Fort Europe, you know more about migration, where you put the borders and stuff, um, and gated communities, but we also enslave the future right now. We enslave by debt our children and the children of our children. So this whole system that has been built on this uh, in the linear economy is enslaving not only the one right now, but also the future. We might even enslave uh, uh, the environment that we live in. This is how you look at it. So what do we see? We see alienation of each other. We see really not liking to be human anymore. I saw a picture of how people are, uh, you know, not liking themselves anymore and war. We have war on this continent. And this is also playing a role here. Let's go a little bit deeper, because we, ha we live in... The Netherlands is a wonderful country because the king said sorry, and not only sorry, he says also forgive me. It means tell me your story so I can feel with you. The first king in the world. So there is hope. But what about the slavery? He said sorry for about six to 900,000 people that the Dutch were involved. But what's happening today? 
So if we look at slavery, what is slavery? That you have got a job that you can't get out, you don't get enough paid, basically you're enslaved by what is called the neoliberal um, capitalistic model. Are we still together? Because now it's getting tough. So if that's slavery, then there was in the Volkskrant, there's a Dutch newspaper uh, just was quoting. And again, it took me quite a while to find these quotes because the system has already put it somewhere there and you have to really search hard to find even this quote from the Volkskrant who says the Dutch are over their ears into slavery. Oh, I thought we just said sorry. Then I searched longer and longer and other month, uh, no, week search. I heard about it somewhere in the back of my mind that Paul Schoundling did some studies and he came up with a number saying that the Dutch economy is having 13.8 million uh, non-Western people enslaved. So 13.8 million enslaved people working for this country today. That's two enslaved people per household today. I'm actually not amazed when I travel around the world and you come in affluent situations, you find people that are serving in those families and there's almost always two gardeners. Something I also hear. Two enslaved persons per family in the Netherlands today. This is how the system works. We are going for the system, how it enslaves. You remember what we're trying to do today. You have to look the beast in the eye. This is the beast. 13.8 million people working for the Netherlands now so we can live this life and sit here. All right, second one. Um, this is domination. Domination is the agenda setting by human beings. Uh, uh, yeah, that's basically what it is. Because we are also saying what is the rights of the non-human beings, but they are living, of the animals. And there's a good discussions going on. But the domination is that human beings do this, and it's basically linked to um, imperialism. Imperialism, Galtung has shown, is where centers combine with centers. So, say, Amsterdam combines with Harare to take the flowers from the, uh, from the rural areas and bring them to Zwolle. <laughs> Those are centers, but uh, Zwolle doesn't have much to do with the rural areas of Zimbabwe in this case, or Zambia, or whatever, you know. Laos. Um, it makes autonomies. And again, that was perfected uh, by all these revelations that were, uh, revolutions that were in mind thinking in Europe. And um, it started with the conceptualization of the nation state, the Westphalia Agreement, where there was a, a, a fight and where there was a separation between church and state. And the nation state was divided. Again, a European thing. And we have a lot of problems in the world because it's the European way of looking at what a nation state is that is creating it. People that are going with their flock in Yemen and Saudi Arabia, big problems in Aden after the Second World War, done by coming out of Westphalia, done in Germany, or what is now Germany. And that's where the stakeholdership reverence comes from. Oh, we have to serve the stakeholders. So what are our ramifications? What do we see today in our economics? Well, we see that these economics are very much interwoven with the military stuff, political system, with culture, the way we speak, and our standardization. That's all tools of, of impl imposing this domination. We see superiority thinking. And um, I have an interesting book here just out in, um, in this uh, environment. It says Overijssel and slavery. We are in Overijssel right now. It's out just by Martin. He might be online um, writing about the slavery in Overijssel. That's the province here. This is, not, uh, this is the first book about it, signed by the author. I'm very grateful. Thank you, Martin. And then there is a foreword, and it's in Dutch. And it says the superiority feeling, the means of superiority of the people in Overijs, so comes out of slavery. Black and white, yeah. Still, the, it's today, you had to do that, otherwise you couldn't get slaves, but the superiority resulted into dom dominations. I know, I do know. And um, so it's everywhere, also in this province. Um, superiority thinking precede maximization, not profit maximization, just proceed, everything should be benefit better for me, preferably. 
and competition and shunting away and wishful thinking actually it will come well we will find a solution technologically wise to solve this problem and out of that we get alienation we don't feel part of it anymore and loneliness and crisis and there i also wrote a paper it's interesting when i'm going to africa to say ah there goes an expat when my friend comes here and says oh there you've got a migrant the same person. If I travel to Africa, hey, an expat, hey, a migrant. Exactly the same. So we have done it with words, as I've said, you know, and I wrote a whole paper. How does that look like? And how does, uh, anyway, I'm not going into it. There's a lot to study if you want after this one. And, but another one, <laughs> rich countries drained $152 trillion out of uh, 96. I don't know what that number means. So I, I have no clue what the trillion is. I have no clue. I worked uh, as a strategist of the K, KPN, and we worked with billions at the time, five billions. And I figured out that's Ritterkerk. That's a whole town. If you buy the whole town, that's five billion. That is five trillion. 150 trillion. I have no clue what it is. So I searched what it cost to have the crisis in 20, 2008. We had a financial crisis. How much did it cost? The world economy, that crisis. I got it from Google, so it might be wrong. They said two trillion. It, the crisis of 2008, which is the worst thing that happened in economic linear life in, in the West, and we hope not to see it again, was two trillion. But let it be five, let it be 10, I don't care. This is 152 million in, okay, 80 years, but divide that's two, two trillion at least per year that we have been looting in the West from the non-West. I don't want to go into that. I, I, I've written papers about this in 2014. You cry. You don't want to do that. But it is reality. And then I try to find it in our papers. And I can't find it. I really search. This paper is full of it, that we are plundering. But you can't get it out of the title. You can't get it out of the abstract. It's somewhere there, hidden. Try to find this stuff. But I'm telling you, you, you it's difficult to find. All right. Third, we're almost getting to the break, by the way, so uh, hold on. And then we're going to the circle and we're going to have hopeful stuff. Extraction, taking according to lust, I want. I wish, I want. <sighs> that needs a bit of power. So we take over businesses, we buy people off, and repression. And it's set in colonialism. Hey, we're getting to colonialism. Remember our question today. How does the linear colonize the circular? But now we have a problem. We're tar starting to talk about colonialism and linking it to the linear economy. But now what's the definition of colonialism? And now we have a big problem because the definition of colonialism are written by the colonizers. It's like going on a hunt. You talk to the deer and say, deer, how is it with the hunt? No, I hear the, the hunt has stopped there. Yes, the deer says, yes, but there goes the hunter. Okay, tell me about the hunter. He has a big gun on his back. Hey, he tells me he doesn't go to shoot you. Oh, no, but he has got the gun. Who tells? He, he shot a while ago, I still remember. And why would he not shoot tomorrow then? Because he told you today. So colonialism comes out of definitions of the one who colonizes. It's the definition of the hunter that the hunt has stopped, not from the hunted. Are you getting me? This is really, uh, you have to think deep. You have to think from the position of the hunted, of the colonialized, what colonization is. And now it becomes interested because there's lots of stories. The first time I uh, lived in Africa was in 87 in a country that was called Swaziland at the time. Now it's called Eswatini. And there was a big story that uh, said, you know, the king had a, a, a dream and there were people that looked very white and they would, you know, should welcome them and take the story, but not the money. Because when you arrive somewhere else, then you're welcome. Why have we got the idea that we are not welcome anywhere else? that we have to conquer. So I only know people that have said, hi, nice you're here. How come I didn't know you? But they tell me that colonialization is, they tell me that I'm not good, I'm bad, I don't have that degree, I don't know, I should learn what economy is. 
And then they come with courses how to do entrepreneurship, and they tell me how to do entrepreneurship, and it's basically brainwashing me. And then when I fill the forms in right, and I can get some of that 152 trillion back. This is colonialization. It's condemnation, brainwashing, conditionality. That's what colonialism is. Sorry, something else. But we're also brainwashed by the, our own stories. We are starting to believe our own stories. We are welcome. People are welcome everywhere. But don't tell, don't not respect somebody else. Don't tell them they are, hmm, or they should, hmm. and if then. That happened. So the, the ramification of this one, colonial, is that you have a reduction of realities. We destruct worlds. Um, we, have, we demand compliance, so we see ourselves in the others because they, they have to do it, otherwise, you know, it's not 152 trillion, but 300. And uh, we get mental illnesses out of it, habitat breakdown, destitution, and solastalgia. I don't know if you know this word, note it down, study it. It's a mental illness that happens when something happens to your home. I, I can be nostalgic that I'm not with my friends overseas. That is nostalgia. I'm not there, I'm here. But if, if there would be a nice lithium mine just outside here, and this is where my bedroom is, and at night there's trucks coming and so on, and my house is not in my house anymore, that's called solastalgia. And that's a renowned mental illness. And that's what we're experiencing many of those today. Earth Emotion is the book. Uh, I didn't put it there, but Earth Emotion is the book where you have it explained. Solastalgia, these are new words that we need in our, uh, new, in, our new, in our new world. New words in new world. And solastalgia, one of them, is a illness that comes out of what we are experiencing right now. Not nostalgia. Okay, this is my last slide, uh, slide for, the, uh, for the break. Please don't go away after the break because now we have a not nice story. It becomes nice. But um, why is it stopping? Uh, yep, there we are. Uh, I wanted to mention a few more values. The one is capitalism. Fantastic. Well, that brings in individualism. And individualism puts jealous people against each other, tells you what you want to want, uh, that, that you take nature for your own private uh, benefits. Um, and it says, be dissatisfied, dissatisfied so I can produce for you and you take. That is what our fantastic capitalism brings us, and I put it to the value of individualism. Again, please, when you feel emotions inside about this story, remember the first slide. Eh? <laughs> um, efficiency, because globalization, fantastic globalization, we live in a globalized world, are we? What, what is the reason of this? This is efficiency, and that makes sure that you keep your resources, feel control of your resources. You can go easily there. Um, and you keep control of your resources. And I see people coming, flying into uh, major capitals out of Europe into the rest of the world. In the morning they arrive, in the evening they're done, uh, they're gone again, just to make sure that everything goes all right for them. In the past they came by boats. Sustainability, sorry to say, sustainability also, uh, you know, we're, we're imposing what sustainability is to the rest of the world. That's called conservation, but we conserve um, our Eurocentric views on what it means people profit. profit. What does that mean? Have you had any input from non-European sources? Where did the words come from? We're saying them all the time. Survival of the individual self. People is most of the time an individual in this place. Geopolitical response to China and overconfidence and self righteousness. So we have to ship now a lot of arms east to keep this one up. Um, securization is shielding off, so you can't see it. We talked about slavery. You have seen that 13.8 million slaves for the Netherlands. Today you can't see them. There seem to be about 30,000 in the Netherlands, headed away somewhere in the Netherlands. The rest you can't see, but they work for. Here. And shielding is a way like that since 9-11. You know that the border is being pushed into Malawi and Mali and stuff for Europe. Anti-terrorism, all these things are harnessing against separation. You remember the, first, the second uh, value. And it insulates and makes us indifferent what happens to others. 
Nou ja, the result is that. And what is the economic uh, consequences? We have ages of separation, centralizing control. We negate Pronia. Pronia is spirit. We can't talk religion anymore, spiritual stuff anymore. Well, that's where worldviews come from. And we lack, therefore, we lack the stories. Who knows what to choose which party right now in the Netherlands, if you would do that, or anywhere in Europe? Who is going with solution? Who has a nice story except of the ones aligned with this? And therefore, we are in crisis. All right. This is a summary of what I've told so far. We have defined the linear economy out of values. These are the values. They are mythical, as we have done. And basically, I call them the terrible three. Orientalism, imperialism, and colonialism. Now, what I would suggest, what you could get out of this, if you write something as a student, or you think something, check what you write if these three are in there. Check. Write what you write, and then go back and look from a distance and say, is there any orientalism in it? Am I othering? Is there any imperialism? Do I think I know and somebody else doesn't? Is there any colonialism that I'm enforcing and basically say others are not good enough? The terrible three. So remember the terrible three and uh, you might uh, start this decolonization. Okay, we have a break of 10 minutes and um, I really urge you to be back in 10 because we still have a lot to cover. And I, t I promise you it will be very different in the, after the break. But we had to go through this one to get ready. So this is called deconstruction. Now we're going to reconstruct after the break. It's five minutes past three. So please be back 16 minutes after three. Is that all right? Are we okay? Thank you. Um, circular economy. We have just done the linear economy. So what is the circular economy now? And now it becomes interesting because I told you that I could not find the definition of the linear economy, but for the circular you can find, now oh, okay, maybe 200. And um, this is the 115th, and, um, oh no, it's not there, I'll to I put it there, there it comes, uh, simple definition, uh, ah, whew. what is it now? too many words then you can have all kinds of discussions so I'm not even going to deal with this because we're going to delegate this one to the normative epistemology and we say we do dynamic integrative so we have nothing to do with this one anyway which is one of those exercises but in the circular economy many researchers are searching for what it is and try to define it and there are about 200 now I think I was just at a, at a electoral uh, um, lecture somewhere and they gave another definition but we know now this is uh, why do we do this we're looking in the wrong way aren't we so um oh yeah we have also three errors we shouldn't use and then reduce them whatever now anyway let's go quickly on because what do we see in practice in practice this report came out just uh, two weeks ago i think it says, hey, this discussion about circular economy is really going well. It's three times more than, uh, being quoted than five years ago. We're going the right direction. However, the amount of circular stuff that's being used the last five years went down 21%. So five years ago, it was 21% um, no, it's the other way. No, anyway, it, over 20% more circular than it is now. We are going backwards even according to these definitions. What are we doing? Now, it's very simple. The linear economy is so big that if that grows 1% in the circular or 10%, then the linear still outgrows it. A simple explanation, but still we are going backwards. And a stunning number, I couldn't get this 152 trillion whatever, but this number is also stunning. We used the last five years, we used 28% of all materials used in the last 124 years. The last five years, we used 28% of all the materials that was ever used in the last 124 years. These things you cannot comprehend. I will say it again. We used 28% of all materials, virgin materials, that were used in the last 125 years. 124 years, five years, 124. I mean, what are we busy with? Something goes terribly wrong here. And um, we see that we have a narrative. This is a story. We are going to change from linear to circular. 
as if we go from here to there. You remember, this is again linear. We go from here to there, we have separated it, we dominate it because they now need to dominate. There are all these words you hear back from the linear talk. The government says 100% target in 2050. Well, 100% is certainly not reachable. I just built a circular house and I cut all kinds of beams. That's not 100%. It can be 99.9, .9, but not 100. Um, the customers, this is an, uh, a poll of a year ago, said, well, yeah, circular nice if it's better and cheaper. Circular is nice if it's better and cheaper. And there's all these fear narratives and polarization and people in the street and uh, against, they need to change what I want and so on. One thing missing. We have turned out the pages of the books, not only of uh, the rest of Europe uh, or the rest of the world, even of our past, because there's a book just came out in Germany, uh, translated in Dutch. We know how to do it, how it has been done. And it states at a certain page, which I cannot find right now. Well, maybe I can. It was all circular in Europe before we had this revolution, which we just explained. It is in the book. Everything was circular. Linear is just new, maybe 100 to 200 years old. So, but in what happens outside of the West? So, I would state that we have got a Eurocentric myopic gaze that has completely obscured alternative views of how to see re reality in economic worlds. And many of the people online that sit inside uh, the continent of Africa will just uh, say, What are you saying, Hedion? Uh, we know this already. But that's why I'm standing here, my friends, because you can't get a visa to get here, and I'm here anyway. So, it needs to be told. There's a whole book full that we have ripped out. So, indeed, and that's maybe where the appealing stories are for how we get intrinsic motivation. You remember, we were searching for intrinsic motivation to have motivation, we have hope, we have faith that we can get there, and we love. That's what we are going to view for. How are we going to do that? First of all, I have to explain what the community is. What's the community? Because that's, I'm told, I said, the, if we go protest, I want them to do this, but we don't say, we want this. Everybody says, we should be we. Let's have a participation society. Let's be we. Let's fund. The grandmothers to take care of the children. Oh, we get a scandal. What's happening here? That's because I think we don't know what community is. And I'm going to explain what it is. So what is a community? So I know what an individual is. That is an individual, isn't it? I'm not going to define it as a human being, you know, just me. And um, yeah, relation, no, 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 me. If you bring those together, we, the literature says then you have got community. But you don't have. Because when you talk to people that did that, for instance, in the scandal that we had in the Netherlands, and you talk about what kind of community life do you come from, they said, no, no, Pete was bad, and Katrine did that, and so on. They talk about people and what they did against them, or the society, or the government. It's always them against me. That's not community. I don't hear us. So then I looked, okay, if these individuals are coming together, I give them a new name. I call them conglomerates. They're a conglomerate. This is actually quite a nice word because I found it in the dictionary. It says, this is fitting exactly. They have a higher purpose, mission, vision, objectives. They get there, they come together. Some fall off, others get there, join the bandwagon. And this conglomerate gets what, where it wants to be. It's fine, works. Individuals work in conglomerates and the conglomerates are where individuals congregate. But where is community now? Community is gone. And 99% of the literature which I tried to prove and I wrote a paper about it, and then the peer reviews go you, throw you out. So I published it in Senegal, because I can't get it published in a European journal. It's a fabulous paper, so to say. I have written a lot, this one is fantastic. And uh, I can't get it in a European paper, because the peer reviews will throw it out. But this is fantastic. This is explaining what an individual is a conglomerate, but my community is gone, and I want to explain what a community is. So I have to look again. now. If we look at the definition of an individual, I have a problem here, because they don't exist. There's no human being not related. 
You come from a mother. You are related. You come from a family. Some are good, some are uh, troublesome, but you are related. You have to deal with it, which many uh, have learned. So we have something else. We have the related human being, which now I call a person. This is the person. A person is the one who understands that he is or she is or wait, I don't know what to say. Uh, you know this language. You know English. You can't in 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 an African language. You can't say he or she. <laughs> I have to say he, and now we have patriarchism coming in. Anyway, uh, the person is a related human being. You're all related, and you are therefore a person. But you are what you are because of your relationships. That defines your authority. For instance, authority only comes through relationships. So uh, no doubt there was a problem with authority in the top, because there is no authority there. There's only power. But we just learned that authority comes out of relationships, and that power is under authority. So now we're getting somewhere very profound. Persons are people related. Now you can imagine when you bring those together, you've got a community. Communities are persons together. But you have to read this graph very interestingly. Now, we, we read left, top, and then we go like that. But you have to read it now differently. You have to start reading here. From community comes persons. From individuals come conglomerates. It's the big I am. The individuals say I am, or the community says I am. And that's why my studies are now. How can a community say I am? Oh, well, let's study it together. That's where the solution lies. All right, so we know communities. Now I can go on. The circular economy, we are going to develop an, a, an other narrative out of the dynamic integrative uh, epistemology. Remember the first slide. Alternative. And that I do, because I lived it. I live it. So I speak it out embodied. We're going to dance this one, because how do you do otherwise? Positioned, co-developed, all this stuff has been done together. Many people in the room will say, ah, I recognize there. Oh, my input is there. Oh, this is not my presentation. This is your presentation. And let's discuss about this. Put your, we need input. We need us. There's no I here. It's community. But we also have community here. We have nobership in the eastern part of the Netherlands. And, and, and that's a different story. People think it's dead. I talked with uh, Martin. Martin, uh, greetings. And... Um, he said, ah, you know, it's not there, but here in Zwolle. But if you go in Ra Rolte, where I was, and a friend, of, oh, no, a nephew of mine lives, he says, I just came from the neighbor because I was helping because of neighborship. I was having the director of KPMG here. He says, I said, what about neighborship? And he said, yeah, hey, hey, can we talk about it, please? There's community, stewardship, rentmeesterschap in Dutch, um, stewardship in Europe, uh, and Ubuntu, Ubuntu in uh, Africa. And Bon Vivir in Latin America. There are many like that. That's community stuff. And now we're talking about behavior, because I'm supposed to do in the nice thing behavioral studies. But what's behavior? And so I come with a very interesting one. We have challenges. We need to change our behavior. That's a challenge. Yes. And we have agency cases. It's your term. But we have lacuna. We have needs. But needs is for individuals and conglomerates. For communities, it's about what you don't know, you don't know. That's why we need us. It's not about our needs, it's about our lacuna, the stuff we don't know. That's what we need. So what are your needs? What do you want? What do you not know that you don't know? That we need to study. And we all need to do it. Scientific reasoning, and we need the scientific reasoning, sensitive to uncertainty, to subjectivity, to um, religious stuff. These are worldviews. These are our stories from which our systems come. So let's have those discussions. It's about our soul. Now, circular economy. Sorry, I had to do this diversion. Otherwise, I couldn't get where I wanted to be because we're going to do the, also the values. So now we do. What are the values for the circular economy? There. Okay, we're done. Um, okay, let me explain. This is uncentered economics. It's common in most parts of the world. I would claim, you know, that Europe and the, the Western economy is only 10% of the world, maybe eight or nine. The rest works differently. 
we have only that gaze of, of, of our way of looking at economics. And when we are not professional, we don't behave like this linear stuff. You remember, we are not professional. And, uh, you know, my son is here. If he takes the tooth, uh, toothpaste, I'm not going to send him a bill. But why should I not do it? Because he takes it for me. Because I'm not professional then. But professional is maybe something we should get away from. So the first one, togetherness. Life-sustaining interconnected communities. Now, at least we now know what community is. So I don't have to explain too much about this one. It's a communion. We are together in diversity. We need otherness in the sense that we are diverse. We are striving to fulfill our communal purpose. And right now, we have to survive. So we have a big communal purpose. But we have also a communal purpose to be safe. You know, all the, all the stuff. Working together in solidarity and stewardship because we have been given something. Because basically the circular economy is exactly the same as the linear economy because you get, you receive it from someone, you use it in view of everyone, and you hand it over to the next one. That's circular. It's the same. Because you always, I'm just in this body here. Um, taking care and sustaining of the context because that's community also. And we have to expand our view on uh, a community, which is ecology. And we have our Norbert ship, sure ship, or Ubuntu. And the fun part was, I was at a company, at the company, and then during a meeting with the company, uh, somebody started, hey, I've done an Ubuntu training. You know, I'm sitting here in Hadewijk in that case, and uh, somebody says, I've done an Ubuntu training. I was at the provincial headquarters here in Overijssel, and said, I've done an Ubuntu training. And people were starting, hey, I, I, I learned something. I don't know how to do it now. Yeah, it's very difficult if you are in that linear. But uh, smell it. There's something there in the air. There's something about togetherness. And it's guarded by, oh, another difficult word, relation holders. Sorry, I have to still educate a bit more. What is a relation holder now? We know a stakeholder, but we don't know a relational. Let me do this one first, uh, uh, quickly. On the right, we have got stories, systems, and actions. You know, this is something we can observe, isn't it? There's a system there we talked about. There's a story of which it's based. But what does influence those? There are two um, influence. There's a political influence, and there's a cultural influence. I'll make it a bit simple, but I hope you can agree with me that on anything, there's influences from the politics they want I want, and the culture, it should be like this and that. Okay, so now if we look at our issue of stakeholdership, the stakeholders look at the politics. They have a stake, they want something. Um, so it's in the word, so that's political. Fine, Polit politics are very important because that's the arena where powers are being dealt with. But is who now, where is culture now? That's why we have got identity, identity politics right now. I mean, it's a, it's a problem because we forget that there are relation holders. The relation holders are the story holders. Are the, 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 we had dominates, we had all kinds of uh, relation holders. The, the notary, uh, the, the police uh, in, in the communities, they were the relation holders. I'm a relation holder. I'm invited to tell a story. I don't exercise power. Tell you a story. In culture, I hope you will change your culture. How it's politically different arena. If we do politics here, why would you listen? I'm not doing politics. So relation holders hold culture. And culture is most important. Otherwise, it's everybody for themselves. Economic consequences of this togetherness in the circular economy means that we love the context. We take every partaker, every one, even the tree and the river and the human and the one in the wheelchair or looks different than us, whomever is part of what's happening. And I do it from my core. So, and that, you know, my heart, my soul, according respect to authority is needed and co-developing economic norms and governance. So this, this, what the economy is, we co-develop, we figure out. It's in practice that we figure out what this means, how the business case looks like, the model. Might be for everybody different. How we work with our customers or with our suppliers. We figure out together with them. Second value, there are five. Dialogue or conversation. 
This is orality. What happens here, and we were talking about dancing this stuff, that's orality. It, I feel for you that you have to listen to me just talking all the time. It's, you know, and of course, if I would dance here, yeah, it would be different. And that's orality. I tell a story. I tell a story. And uh, hopefully you accept it. And the content, you can Google. Um, it's inter-existence. I try to connect. We did an action here. That's orality, that's dialogue, uh, cognition of embodied forms, of authority, of the people, where they are in time and place. It's very special you came here. You took the effort to take your body and sit here. Listen to this. That's what it is. That's dialogue. Attitude forming by storytelling. We change because we hear stories. And that's real time and face to face. You need to not only see the 20%, uh, of the physical uh, conversation, but also the non-textual. Uh, the interesting thing is here also, I forgot to mention that it is not only the word, but the letter is a very special thing. My PhD is a letter to a community, but because uh, books and text are very often means of appropriation, but not a letter. All forms of communication are valid and all contribute in all ways. That's why at this university we also take um, experience, knowledge, serious. People are fighting for it. That's why we have artists in the room also. And um, what are the economic consequences of this one? Worth is recognized how it is being spoken about. I know of trucks that one was costing 10,000 bags of maize and the other one was 20,000. Therefore, the 20,000 bags of maize truck is better. Although from the outside, it looks exactly the same. But it's how we speak about it and what is worth to us is how we speak, how we love our Zeepkistje. That was what Lisbeth talked about, our, our professor, a couple of months ago. Appreciation of the life-giving context and each person present needs to participate. And we need to co-develop this stuff. Okay, number three, sharing is caring. Um, generosity, it's better to, it's more difficult to receive than to give. But we need to exercise first giving before we can receive. So it's generosity and keeping balance, economy of mutuality, Erasmus University is doing a good job there. There are different systems available. Recognizing the grace of resource provisioning. Let's be thankful there is something to be had. And respect diversity, to people to contribute. Nobody is lesser, there's no meritocracy. If somebody's in, in a wheelchair, they can contribute differently. But it's, this, it's how we speak about it that makes it worthwhile. And the authority set the markets. There's another paper that we don't go into now. It's very close, it's in our vicinity. I'm speaking to you and we have friends all over the world linking in today and also linking at different times, but they miss something because they are not here. I'm sorry to say, but I really appreciate, but they are being filtered by how the digital barons want them to have it. And some things are gone that you are experiencing when you sit here. So it's important that we understand that it is in the vicinity, and that's our family most of the time, that we have a responsibility to care according to the needs, the re regeneration. When we are there, we should be welcome and therefore contribute. And there is a sense of abundance. This whole scarcity thing, where does it come from? Um, reciprocity and Caritas, let's uh, go. What is the common consequences of this one? All participate and contribute according to their kind, including the trees, the birds, and I don't know what. According to their kind. All valuable. And there's sufficiency. We don't want more. We, want, we have sufficiency and the sufficient for everybody. In the comments, we go on. Value three for the circular economy. Now. It happens now. You're going through it now. Yeah, we're going to change tomorrow, but this is happening now. Is this what happened now? The agenda, time, the concept of time, where is it all coming from? Um, the continuous present moment. Decentering time, recognizing the season and right moment. I mean, people tell me stories of how difficult it is with certain uh, 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 cultures, how it's difficult to make an appointment. But maybe it's not the right time to have the meeting anyway. Sometimes I had a meeting this morning at 10 o'clock that we did not know anymore why we were meeting. We stopped. Oh, yeah, it was in the agenda. Yeah, 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 we have a meeting. 
Okay, yeah, no, yeah, I know that has been taken away because we had some other meetings in the meantime. And uh, no, let's stop. Okay, we stopped. So that was not the right moment, but it was. It took our time. So why, why do that? Unfolding histories and revealing futures. So this is interesting. The history is still unfolding because you have a different view on the history. So let's combine it as a different history and the future. Yeah, I'm sitting in the car going 120 kilometers per hour, but I'm sitting still talking with you and the future comes to us. I can, you know, if I do like that, I'm, that tree might be my future, but you know, the future is still coming to me. So it is now. And therefore what happens with our customers and our suppliers, we don't know. But we have to live in the now. Presenting beauty, purpose, soul at peace. Man, is this something we want? It comes if we are in the now. I wish I, was, I could live in the now. I hear so many people say, saying it, but why don't we do it? And it's embodied knowledge, because if it is a different now, and you ask me to sell, tell the story, I'll do it again. But it will be different, because the circumstances are different, but it's the same story. And, and it's universalism, but elastic. Now, this is very not normative, you remember? Normative uh, certainty yeesh, is gone out of the window, but we have certainty in our relationships and in the now. Conviviality and frontierness. These are words you can study. These are fantastic study subjects. You know, there's always new things coming, and that is innovation, and it's ex innovation also. And conviviality means I am very positive about us meeting. Thank you for being here. Conviviality is approach everything with positive attitudes and expectation. Improve, improve isation. We improve isation, not improve isation, but improve isation. Uh, grounded in identity, which comes out of calling, and capacity, which comes out of gifting. Now, I, I, I recognize this is new stuff. I don't know why it's not being taught, because it's not rocket science, this. But, you know, sorry to say, but it's quite, identity comes out of calling, and, you know, there's a lot of literature on that. <laughs> it's economics, by the way, what we're doing now. And, um, Either, and in the now, we are either observing, or we are thinking model and sharing, or we are waiting for the right moment to appear, and then we act very fast, otherwise people will stop us, which they also have a right to do, but we have done it quickly, and here we are. That's how this lecture came about. This was only called together two weeks ago. Hey, I'm amazed, this is the Netherlands, how come you still had a hole in your agenda? And some people I, I talked, they said, can you come on this date? And I said, huh, look at my agenda, it's empty. How is that possible? And that's nice. Because it's divine stuff, you know. You are here for a purpose. Let's be purposeful in the now. Not what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do now? Tomorrow might never come. Who cares? Tomorrow is now again, by the way. Um, economic consequences. The communal and personal insight in, in, in ecological, social and financial accounts. We all keep these accounts. To survive in an economy, you also have social accounts. You know, your standing in community. Regurgitation of wisdom stories and convivial economics. I haven't a clue what it is, but I just threw it in because I thought it was a nice word. All right, um, the last one, harmony. Now it's getting very interesting because now we belong. Don't we all want to belong? Did we not want to be part of the community? Don't we want to be knowing that we can count on each other because everybody has attention to each other, belong, interconnected with the birds even that come to sing. I heard them this weekend again in Amelo. It was absolutely fantastic and I was so grateful. And uh, it's rhythms, contrapuntal lives, uh, incomplete and humble. By the way, incomplete. See here, we are incomplete beings. We need each other. <coughs> Not me, complete. And I, no, I need you. Us. Incompleteness is something to embrace. And humble, compassion, empathy, love and attention. What? Of course, everybody wants that because we seek equilibrium. We want to be happy, content, because it's good. That circular economy, by the way, is balanced expressions, careful, learning to respond in a change of world, being an improved visor, improve stuff, steering away from quarrel and conflicts. I mean, I saw a video of uh, a surf video we saw in Senegal and the taxi driver and said, how is your day? Yeah, you know, I had no quarrels, no conflicts today. I had a very good day. He didn't talk. I made so much money. I did 10 drives. No, I had no quarrels. Fantastic day. Yes, of course. 
subject to probations and taboos. Taboos are there. You need initiation to be allowed to exercise certain ways. That's uh, actually a uh, university should be a way to be initiated, <laughs> not a certificate. And there are taboos in the meantime. Yeah, it's not uh, not very common anymore, but they are there. And we have restoration techniques. Uh, you know, we are restoring. Sharing is caring. Interactions are in safe meeting places where we can have these discussions. And I hope you feel safe. I feel safe, amazingly. And going for joy and wisdom. Yeah, I should be very nervous to tell these kinds of stuff. I feel very safe. Thank you. And, uh, but yeah, how many people dare to say that from this page? But to thank you for feeling safe. I feel really safe. And that's why I need you. And you need me. And we need each other. And this is what happened. This is an us thing. Okay, value perspective. This is what we showed before. And it's basically framed on the big five. Now, these are the scientific words that I put in my PhD. You can Google them or look later. Just Google them. This is actually these values. I put English words to them. They are a bit deeper than that even. Good. Let's go on because we have a question. How come that the linear economy colonizes the circular economy? We have done now the linear economy. We have done the circular economy. So now what about this colonization? Two slides only. Because you already feel it, don't you? Is this, this linear economy screaming to the circular economy? I know how the world looks like and what works and what is success and what's not. And you better, you are somebody else. You are circular, it's not linear, and it's uh, for the left side or I don't know what. Put the label on it. And it's not me, says the linear economy. It's other. It's even othering the circular economy. And it puts all this 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 issue of the the issue of the um, definitions is a very interesting one. It demands a definition and it goes for it. It's wrong. It doesn't work. It basically the linear economy gives the rules in which the circular economy has to explain itself. That's what's happening. That's colonization. And. Um, it negates even if it says I showed you I told you that it was difficult to find the number of 13.8 million slaves to the Netherlands today. It's difficult to find. Try to Google it. The system puts you down. It took me a week, really physically a week to find. Just put this stuff in the Google and uh, it gives you something else or get you in a rabbit hole, but not to this number. If you don't know the number, by the way. Um, and um, so or it negates, or it encapsulates. We need green growth now. Green growth. That's the future. It's just encapsulated. It's still the linear story. And it has the power to categorize, to fund, to jump in a plane, to demand uh, that you pay for me, that to survey, to uh, make visible. I will declare. Or if you try, as I told you, the peer review will throw you out if you try to do that. Apprehend the build and social control. <sighs> but it's even worse because we live in super colonial times. Uh, Alina told about that she was studying uh, neocolonialism. So I went indeed two floors down because I was actually saying, what did I say, Alina? I said, how come you study neocolonialism from a colonial uh, uh, frame of mind? The definition neocolonialism is a colonial term. That's why it gave a bit of an identity crisis because this is this is nonsense because we have super colonialism. We have colonial agents; they of course morph, and now we've got international businesses to do it. Even the we and uh, most almost all the participants in this meeting are being colonized by Google, the Bandit Five, Facebook, you Google, your social media gives you a news. Have you got a happy? Have you got a clue what happens in Tokyo right now or? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe Argentina. Have you seen that uh, the president went to the Pope and, and so on? Did you see it? This is interesting stuff. This is a right wing thing or left wing, I don't know, uh, whatever. And, uh, and he goes and now goes to religious route. Fascinating. I hope you saw it, uh, but I'm not so sure because we are being colonized by what news we are supposed to see. And the positive news is not there most of the time. Um, by countries, by, by international business and so on. 
and it's a production and reproduction of colonial practices. Right now, uh, in 2014, I did a paper and it was one trillion ownership of England in uh, Africa. Never been as big and I don't dare to look at the, paper, uh, at the numbers right now. Just goes on and on. Continuing of bridge, bringing civilization, bringing sustainability, bringing whatever we bring, development, bringing, we bring, bring, bring. And it's just a white savior, there to go again, jumping in the plane, telling how things should be done. It's not knowing there is m m other things to know, other authorities to uh, give respect to, or that is embodied knowledge that you can dance it. You don't know, it must be written. And orality. And if you don't align, mm -mm, no job, no income. Thank you, Windesheim, for taking me on. But it's the first time in 20 odd years. Yes, non-alignment has severe consequences. It doesn't matter, uh, it happens. Now, how to solve this stuff, how to bring it together. And there I have to talk paradigms. Some people are sick and tired of hearing the word paradigm. But let's go back to the theory of what a paradigm is. A paradigm is a collection of stories, of uh, myths, of symbols and so on that thinks th that defines the, the, the way you look at reality. That's a paradigm. So I define three paradigms. The I paradigm. We, oop. And the I paradigm is me. This is the world I'm looking. And I need I have rights and I want to be redempt. Uh, give me what I need. Or it's my right, so give it to me. The I paradigm is around me. Individualism is part of I paradigm. Narcissism too. Um, we have a we paradigm. The we paradigm now is us. You remember the explanation of community. The person is an us. This is not an individual, it's a person. And um, it is incomplete. It's in relationship. Hopefully the relationship is still alive. And um, it wants redemption and reciprocity. I can, I can rely. I'm part of. I'm defined by us dancing on the music. It's not me alone dancing. Not too nice, I guess. I'm not a good dancer, though, but uh, I'm be told. It's paradigm. Hallelujah. What's that? Worship. Nature, man, hear this bird singing. How is it possible that that happened? What is the nature beautiful? Look at that play. It really touched me. It's paradigm. Transcendental, religious. Most of the stories come out of that. The wisdom is in that paradigm. But I'm not going beyond the first two. So let's, uh, no. I'm, now what we're going to do is say the linear economy is the I paradigm and the circular economy is the we paradigm. I hope you still follow me because I'm building fast. But we're going to look at both paradigm, both uh, economies from the I paradigm. Okay, what what are we seeing? So here you see a question: What is real? What is the focus? What is to be positioned? And if you then look at the linear economy, you find these words. You might recognize them. Oh, let's structure stuff. Uh, attitude: I want to take it. You know, where can I get my points? Uh, oh, I have done uh, my, my degrees, so where can I now get my benefits, my entitlements? I, I'm trying to use my powers, and so on and so on, the I. But then you go into the we paradigm, and then you find these things. Then they are going to network. Uh, oh no, we need to network now. Uh, we need to share, we need to have faith in stuff. We have to have do stim hey, this stuff, stuff. This I know because I'm trained in school how to do it, but this is stuff. So now we're starting how to get there from an individual, from an I-paradigmic view. Now, the interesting thing is, how would it look from the we paradigm? This graph, if you come from togetherness, if you still follow me. Yeah, you do, sort of, uh, hmm. yeah. Okay, this. Hey, different words on the left side. Because when we are together, all these other words are not that important anymore. It's about what's it affect, how do we, sh these are the big five, uh, the uh, dialogue, how do we share, how do we align, you find those there, and now we act, and therefore we are habituated, this is our being, this is how we are, we are comprehensive, we look at the whole thing, we do it co incorporatively, but if we now look to the linear, from the V paradigm, 
you find them reserved. They stand still, not much happening. Um, they are assertive. What do you say? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I have to deal with it. Don't listen, talk. Um, they're defiant. No, no, no. This is, this is actually the way it works in the world. You know, this is how it is. We are going to educate this because this is how it works, not the other stuff. Don't know what to do with it. But this is now from the circle perspective looking at the iPad. So this is interesting research area. I'm busy with this kind of stuff. Again, these are co-produced. So I've shown it to many people. Actually, uh, even in a company, we had them on the table and say, and there was a comment. No, it may be that word. Okay, we'll change. How does it look now? It's like a sculpture that you build together. That's these graphs. There's no, just a graph. And again, you find now that these become active. So what's the solution to all this stuff now? How do we get away from the difficulties we are in right now? Paradigm switching. Now, the interesting thing is that there is no theory of that. I, I, I have not found, I've uh, written about it maybe 10 years ago for the first time. And then there's a coon, is it, in paradigms. And you shift paradigm and you change paradigm, but you don't switch paradigm. Now, when I'm in a, I've lived many years in African village. And when people go to school, they learn the Western way of school is. That's in the I paradigm. They have to do it and they get their grades, very high grades, by the way. And they work hard and they get I paradigm. But then they come in the village and they can't do anything with it because it's all about you, but what about us? And then they are in the we paradigm, because now in the village, yeah, they do it. And then they go to church or wherever they go, to the mosque, and they say, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. I don't know. And they switch. So I saw it. And I learned to do it. It takes me quite a while. When I'm I paradigm and I get to a we paradigm environment, it takes me a while. So if you travel abroad, make sure to know to whom you talk in which paradigm. You might talk out of the I paradigm to somebody in the we paradigm and you get utterly confused. We go deep here now, but uh, hey, this is interesting stuff. And I have to, when I get back to where we live in the village, it took me about a week to be able to do we paradigm again. Because here you have to be assertive and all that kind of stuff. Okay, realities overlap. The circular economy was, is, and will be. The linear economy is the odd one out. Linear economy is strange. Circular economy is normal. Not new normal. That was normal. The linear one is abnormal. Relationships interact with worldviews. Well, we have done that. Heritage, culture, moralities, economic actors are always relating. It's not the deal is not over when they walk away. If you took the win lose through contracting, you will get it back one day. Circular economy strives on convivial human society and relationships because, well, even there, was this Einstein? All these quotes are misquoted, but they are nice anyway. Uh, the system that is being used to make the current system cannot solve for the rest. You know, we have to look at it differently. And I hope you saw today a completely different perspective on it. This is exactly what he meant, I hope. So we have got theory U, open mind, own will, um, and open heart. There are theories how to do that. You don't get from A to B in a linear way. You get it in a circular way. Well, theory U is a bit of a circular thing. Being taught at the university, by the way, exercise humility. And it's tough to learn this kind of stuff. So you do paradigm switching. I state that it's possible to be in the I paradigm here, then go to your community, be in the we paradigm, and you switch. But now also economically, you need to switch. So because if we don't, we become shredded. Not a bad thing, actually, shredded identity, but that's another le lecture. Um, Innovate as representatives of the collective purpose. Exnovate means stop doing something. We know the word innovation, but exnovation is as important as that. We should say we stop something in five years. And um, unmoral practices, please. And decenter harmful systems and in a moral universe. Good. So, I think this is almost the last one. It's about right now in this place. Uh, in not all the places in the world, is about decentering this Eurocentric uh, view of what, a, what economic life is and dethroning individuality. Harsh words, but okay, that's my conclusion out of the first part. We have to decenter 
uh, these ways or European ways of knowing, and we have to dethrone these individual gods. Strengthen the circular economy by recentering the we paradigm. We have to exercise the we paradigm. So I hope in the case at this university we, we want to try to do that, to train the we paradigm. There was an interesting case. To give you an example, we were walking, um, oh, there was Anthony, we were walking, uh, uh, getting a cup of coffee, there was some bread there. And a colleague came by and he said, hey guys, free bread. And, uh, hey, this is not free bread. That's the I-paradigm, yeah? Free bread. Take. No, it's shared bread. Somebody took the effort to bring the bread there. And the question of us was, can we take off this bread? How is it being shared? So we're looking for the authority who has, no, 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 you just take it, it's free. No, it's not free, it's shared. Somebody put it here on purpose, but unfortunately not a sign you are free to take. <laughs> What's the relationship of this bread? Who shared it? That's the circular economy. Strengthening by recentering the people. How, and this is actually what's being preached already in our university. Jan Rotman, one of the gurus in this country, talking about transition, says, no, we don't, we don't are in an era of change, we are in a change of era. That's what I propose here. Circularity is a change of era. So how do we decenter Eurocentric collectivism and dethroning individuality? By finding intrinsic, bigger than self values, which I've shown you. Inspiration to withstand this dystopical uh, normal, this strange stuff that we are in right now. Overcome the folded arm, it's bigger than me, I can't do anything anyway. Well, you know you yeah, can. How can we still do and live this hypocrite life? Conversion from the proud anthropogenic, that means the world where the human puts everything to its, um, yeah, to its pleasure, I don't know. Uh, proud even, and it leads to ecocide. We're killing the planet by being symbiogenic, which is the way of a, uni a uni universal look at that everything connects with each other interdependently. This conversion, by the way, conversion means repentance. We have to say sorry <laughs> and to change our ways of doing. Gracefully change the status quo of exclusion and inertia. Gracefully, you know, not forcefully, because this, this is with pain, to purposeful collaboration and equality, connection, mobilization to an edifying normal. Edifying means it, it puts you into place, makes you feel worth. Wow. Through anti-emancipating research, that's what we do at this university, to reflecting on the lankuna, not the needs, on what we don't know. We have to search for what we don't know. So we need our friends all over the world to tell us. So please come and research here. We can't research ourselves. We can find our needs, but we cannot find our lankuna. We need the rest of the world to, to tell us. And agency, intersectionality, and pedagogy. We have to renew our thinking and our teaching. So what about me now? What do I do? I live embedded in community and unashamedly ethical. I've tried to search and rescue stories which I have told you one today, inspiring and emancipating to foster expansion of our inclusive circle economic behavior. How do I do that? I, through, I research in three areas, community engagement, workforce development, and thought leadership. We have to tell the story. We have to be equipped for it, but we have to do it out of a communal feeling. We need each other. Otherwise, we can't do this alone. I sign for this. What about you?